Brad Keselowski is entering this weekend at Indy, going for three straight wins as a car owner. Now, I have to say, when you started as a NASCAR driver nearly 20 years ago, was this something that you could have ever seen coming? Yeah, you know, having the truck team and uh, all the efforts that we had there, I think um, you hope that you get to these shoes. I know I had the dreams of getting here, but uh, then when you realize them, it's a little bit different, right? It's uh, somewhat surreal, but, uh, you know, as a whole, I'm just really proud of everyone and um, want to keep it going, right? Um, and uh, I got my, my eyes focusing forward. You know as, as well as anybody how big of a place, how big of an accomplishment it is to get to this place. You know, when you look at just how the, how the team environment has been, like how has this last month or so been for you and the team? Well, you know, it's, it's uh, interesting because people see results uh, on the outside and, and they get super excited by them. And, and I do too, don't get me wrong, but you know, I, I, I think results-based thinking is very dangerous because you know, in motorsports, you control a significant portion of the end result, but you don't control the entire end result. And so, uh, you know, oftentimes you'll, you'll have all these ingredients that, you know, you're really excited about and you think you're doing things right and that the, the pieces that you don't control either hold you back or propel you forward. And, and so the best thing you can do is focus on the things that you can control and, and you know, execute those at a high level. And, and you know, with, with that in mind, or at least that's how I feel about it, with that in mind, you know, the last month or two, we've done a really good job of that controlling the things we can't control and executing with those pieces and have we been perfect no but you know seeing that is, is really exciting and then when things do go your way you can capitalize you've known Chris for quite some time I mean where is he mentally right now just from an athlete perspective and just how you are mentally going into each race weekend I think Chris is in a good spot he's very focused uh, he's got good experience he's surrounded by some strong people arguably the best people he's ever been surrounded by um, and I, I think that's a formidable, you know, foe for anybody out there on Sundays. Your move from Penske to here, Roush, was a big, big one, and it got a lot of people's attention. Having this turnaround with with competition, people see that. As, some people see that as one of your biggest accomplishments. Is that fair to say? And and where do you really rank ownership wins on your kind of resume of, of success? Yeah, I mean, the, the move from Penske to what's now RFK, it was a big move. It's a bold move, and, um, you know, I, I, I guess I'd probably uh, look at it and say I wish I would have done it a little bit sooner and been a little more aggressive, but, uh, you know, winning races as a driver is cool. Winning races as an owner is super cool. It's hard to really compete or rank those against each other, uh, but this is, you know, the, the next evolution of my life and career. You said it would be better to happen sooner. I mean, we know the car was different just a couple years ago. Is there any reasons as to why you think you, you maybe should have gotten on it a little sooner? Yeah, probably more just the charters and everything else. And, uh, you know, I just feel like I, I was ready to do this three or four years ago and uh, just was too chicken, I guess. But uh, now that it's come together, it's, it's super exciting. Denny Hamlin mentioned earlier the, the balance of emotions for you. These last two weeks, you've gotten out of the car you had a winning car, but it didn't work your way, but your team won the day. How have you been balancing those emotions? Like, what is that experience like? Because many drivers don't get that kind of dual perspective. Oh, it's definitely a dual perspective, and it's competing perspectives of, you know, internal frustration for yourself. Like, you know, if I'd have done this differently, or if we'd have caught this break, but we didn't, but then on the other side, you know, it's elation for, for the company. Um, and so, definitely competing emotions, but um, in the end, uh, without a doubt net positive. A driving factor in success is manufacturer support. You've known Ford for a long time back in BKR. How has that kind of evolved over these last 18 months or more to make this success possible? Yeah, I mean, I think the relationship that a team has with OEM is it's always evolving <laughs> to be candid. And, you know, uh, our relationship with Ford Motor Company uh, back in the days when it was Roush and then Roush Fenway and now RFK, has evolved as well. Um, you know, Penske has just done a great job of, of holding the mantle at Ford, and they deserve all the credit in the world for that. And I, I think overall, it's good for Ford to, to have you know uh, more than one company that can go out and win races consistently. And uh, we, we want to make sure that we can you know hold that up. And you know, ideally, we, we want to win the most races, right? But uh, you know, we, we got to walk, crawl, and run. And uh, uh, or crawl, walk, and run, and uh, I, I think we're crawling, maybe walking, but we're, we're not to the running phase, so uh, we've got some more work to do, and um, you know, we're hopeful that we can continue to garner more support with our OEM relationships. That's critical for us. 
uh, and, and we're putting the results up on the board, I think, to, to justify that. We just saw Jack Roush leave uh, one of the motorhomes there. Great to see him at the track. I know he doesn't come to as many races. The team's been winning, but he hasn't been there yet. So what does it really add when he's at the track? And, and I'm sure one of the biggest moments would be to have him in victory lane with you. Yeah, it's uh, you know Jack was with me in Victory Lane when we won the, the duels at Daytona uh, in 2022, and, and that was certainly a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, we hate that he hasn't been here for the last three wins, but uh, you know he's, he's he gets here when he can and when when his health you know affords him the ability to do so, and, and we're we're happy for him when he's able to enjoy those moments. And finally, this weekend at Indianapolis, another road course. You got a, you know a couple left for the year. Where are you when it comes to the IndyCar doubleheader? A lot, a lot of fans love this weekend. It's an opportunity to open them up to other motorsports. Yeah. How can you sum up the importance of a weekend like this? Yeah, it's an interesting weekend. You know, there's there's things to like about, it, there's things to dislike about it, and you know, I, I carry a mixed bag of emotions. You know, I, I I wish that we were racing on the the oval, but then I also respect the fact that we're able to do a doubleheader with IndyCar because we're not. Um, so you know, there's a, there's a big mixed bag for me. Are there any opportunities for IndyCar and NASCAR to, to kind of have another dual weekend? You know, may, I've heard, you know, Chicago or others since, you know, this one may not return next year. Yeah, I mean, if I had my druthers, we would, you know, participate with them in the doubleheader at, uh, in Detroit. I think that would be uh, really something cool to bring the race into the streets of Detroit. But I'm very biased on that being from Michigan. But uh, outside of that, it would be nice to, to do an oval somewhere. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.